I'm J.P. Murrieta with the New Mexico Activities Association. I've covered high school sports for more than a quarter of a century. Fan behavior has been an issue since sports were invented, but right now, it is out of control. The threatening and abusive language has to stop. Persistent poor conduct? Those are not words we want associated with fan behavior. We have three better words. Compete with class. When parents are shouting obscenities at officials during a middle school girls basketball game, something is wrong. As one reporter recently put in a column, quote, if you've ever uttered a curse word at officials trying to do their job, you're the problem, unquote. That kind of behavior is impacting the pool of officials. We are at a critical shortage of officials in various sports. It's difficult to find people who want to officiate and who can blame them. Who wants to come out to be berated on the field of play for two hours? A large group of young officials give it up after a year or two. Why? Because they're tired of getting yelled at. You really just need to have really thick skin. Yeah. It's that it's... It's kind of that throw you to the wolves feeling. My name's Leon Lopez. Uh, I work out of the Northeast region. Uh, I work in Santa Fe. I've been doing this for 40 years. Um, you know, so I've seen a lot of basketball. I've seen a lot of changes in uh, fan behavior. Um, you know, I, I think what I've really noticed is, is just respect has changed. I don't know if it's, you know, parents trying to live their life through their kids, you know, it's an inflection on them if their kid's not playing well and the calls don't go their way. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think some of the parents uh, need to get it in perspective. It forces those with talent and those that really want to be an official to stop because it's just, it, it just feels like it's, it's not worth it. It's hard to um, tell adults what to do, especially when they're, it's, directly or indirectly related to their children, right? Um, but we remind them who they represent, you know, obviously themselves. Um, that doesn't go very far at times, you know, they're, and, but when we tell them, hey, you do represent your child, you represent our program and our school, and I would appreciate you guys representing us in a classy way, the best way possible. You know, I've been on the floor when when fans are just being very abusive to referees and, and sometimes coaches and even some cases players. It's embarrassing. I've seen some of the kids just kind of know that that's their parents or their, their, their uncles or aunts and they're embarrassed. I think a big part of uh, teaching these kids is, is they need to learn respect to authority and there's authorities in our life, whether it's a teacher or a parent or an official. It's not that fun when no one is nice. Once in a while, uh, you know, you, you might get on an official and, and complain a little bit, but that's my job as a coach, and hopefully we do it respectfully, but sometimes, you know, I mean, I'll yell at the, the officials just like any other coach, but, uh, you know, I want to treat them with respect because they're a big part of the game. Until people take accountability for what they are doing, they're just going to continue to do it. At the end of the day, we're, this is a high school basketball game. This is for our kids. Um, we do need parent support and involvement. We do need our officiating crew to um, be um, the best that they can be, just like we expect our coaches and our players to be. And by yelling at people, it just I don't think that's really going to help. It's just a game. Let your kids have fun. Let them play and allow them to learn the game. I always tell the kids, everybody makes mistakes, coaches, players, and officials, and we just gotta you know, understand that and, and move forward every time. We need to all do better. Um, not care less, but figure out a way to care better. I have never really come across a referee that's trying to cheat anyone. I hear that we're cheaters in many cases. We spend a lot of our own time and money to become better at this advocation. We all have regular jobs. We spend, if I had to add up all the, the hours that I have spent officiating for the dollars that I have received to officiate, I can probably tell you I'm in the $2.50 category. So that means that I love this. I want to do something good for the community. And I want people to understand that it is part of the game. We have to be there. The game couldn't be done without officials. It couldn't be done without fans. I think it's very exciting to have fans that are within the limits of what they should do. We shouldn't need police escorts all the way out of town for officials. And yes, that happens. We shouldn't have to tell parents to act like adults, but we do. If you see poor behavior at your school, shut it down immediately. 
If you don't do anything about it, you are condoning it. It will only continue and continue to get worse. Be a part of the solution, not part of the problem. If you're a fan, cheer as loud as you can. Encourage your kid. But when it comes to criticizing the officials, zip it. We love the hometown passion and enthusiasm, but keep it positive. If you think the officiating is poor and needs improving, here's a suggestion. Sign up and grab a whistle and help make it better. We are losing officials, and without officials, there are no games. Games will be canceled because of the shortage of officials. Your kids might not have the opportunity to even play because games are canceled after some poor behavior drove the officials away. We are at a point of holding games without fans. We are at the point of canceling games because there's no officials. Let's hit reverse on this road trip and just back it up. These officials have chosen to help out athletics by being a part of the game. We don't want to lose them. Encourage positive support and eliminate the negative behavior. The kids deserve better than this.